Today we are in Bristol to do some city riding. Oh, hello. Chris, what are you riding? This is my new present from John Cannings and the Tech Channel Hank. It's my new fixie. You like those, don't you? Yeah, but why are you riding it? They're normally reserved for velodromes or closed circuits like the Red Hook Crit. Don't be silly. A fixie's the perfect vehicle for getting around a city, even if it's as silly as Bristol. See, I disagree. So with that in mind, I've got some tests that will show you just why geared bikes are better for city riding. Hmm, sounds ominous. A few tests. Hold on, need to <laughs> put my helmet on. See you later, I'm away already. In this video, Chris and I are going to go head to head on city streets. But don't worry, we are abiding by all the laws of the road and as ex-professional riders, we are riding fully within our limits. Right, first up, Chris, is one you might not like that much. It's a climbing up and descending down challenge. Yeah, well, you know I'm a fan of a good descent. Well, yeah, I thought you'd like that second half. But you climb up from here to the traffic lights, up to the top, yep. round the triangle and descend back down where I'll be with the stopwatch and I'll time you. Right, okay. A few ground rules then. No jumping red lights. Fair. And in fact, no breaking any laws of any kind because I can't have that many points in my license. And since it's your challenge, I think you should go first. I'll, I'll take that. Park. All right. You're on. Careful get the wet time Hank's taking his position. I reckon we have around 15 seconds to go before the lights go green. I've got to get clipped in. You don't have to get clipped in. Well, I'm going to press the start. Oh, here we go. Oh, he's jumped the gun a little bit. He's still not in. What is he doing? Another red light. Second red light and we're off. Big gear start. Now it's to the descent. Hopefully I don't get stopped by another light. We got a green light for the finish. Right, Chris, you're up. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. Got my pedals in the right position. I mean, if you beat me with jeans and trainers, it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> Go! Go! Up, up, up. Right, acceleration off the line. Find a rhythm because. It's quite a big uphill, and also you realise just how much you pull up on the pedals when you're riding flat. Ah, oh, first red light of the ride. Unbelievable. Alright, meet the light, meet the light. Go, 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 go. It's green, it's green, it's green, it's green. Oh yeah, it's green. Curl your feet around the pedals. Max effort. And secret weapon. Here we go. Oh yeah. It's a fixie. Stop at the lights! <laughs> oh, that was close. We might actually, we might actually draw. No. Yeah. Hey, you got to start? No. The line's this? No, it's not, is it? Hey, your line was. Test number one done. And you did it in a time of three minutes and 26 Ooh. seconds. Which is awesome, seeing as you're in a pair of jeans and trainers. Yeah, I could go straight to the pop now, couldn't I? I happen to know that was a good time. But I also happen to know it wasn't good enough because you did a whopping 3.24. Oh, thank God I beat you <laughs> just by two seconds. Yeah. I think it comes down to, though, as beautiful and nice as that bike is to ride, it's going to spend just as long waiting at the traffic lights as I am on a fixie that John Canning's built in his spare time. I mean, I can sprint pretty quickly, so the time between the lights, you're not going to make up that much time on me, are you? Yeah, so with that in mind, I've got another test plan for us. Ooh, are I you like ready that. for test number two? For test number two, it's a short time trial. Oh, like a prologue. I used to enjoy those. But a bit shorter. I've devised a small course for us. We're going to head down this straight, cross over the first roundabout, then go all the way around the second roundabout, back to the first roundabout, then back the way around that one, then left to the second roundabout and to the finish. As you've just heard Hank describe, that route sounds rather complicated. So we're going for a sighting lap. We're quite close to each other, mate. We've been friends for a long time. We're at the star line of the second test. Are you ready, mate? As ready as I'll ever be. Three, two, one, up, up, up. Wait, we need off the line. Up, up. Right. Get rhythm, pedestrian crossing. 
overtake maneuver. Perfect timing. Brian and Hank, you're up next. Yeah. I've just about recovered from my effort. I can hold the stopwatch now. We'll wait until the pedestrian crossing is clear. That only seems fair. Yeah. Three, two, one, go! Ah! Right, he's coming. He's on the way. So he's around the final corner and he's moving. He's going properly fast, but is he gonna get air over the line? Yeah, of course he is. Right, Chris, that's the agility test done and dusted. And again, you surprised me on that bike. Wow. You did a time of one minute and 11 seconds, which on that surface, on that bike, I doffed my cap, so that was good. Not gonna lie, did quite enjoy it, but as much fun as I had and as fast as it looked, wasn't quite enough to make up to your one minute and one second, frankly blistering time. Thank God, I'm, I wouldn't have lived it down if you had beaten me. No, I wouldn't have let you forget either. <laughs> you do quickly become aware on these bikes, you just can't corner quite like you can on one of those. I mean, you got your brakes, you can freewheel, whereas I might clip a pedal if I lean too much. I can't stop quickly if someone steps out on the road, but the fact that you have to be more conscious of all of this does mean, ultimately, you're training your technique and your skills much more. You're becoming a more thoughtful bike rider. All round better rider, I guess. I reckon, yeah. Right, that's all done, I guess. No, 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 it's not quite, because I think there's somewhere I can get my own back on you. And it's at mm. the pub, but it doesn't involve too much drinking. Come on. Interesting. I've quite enjoyed all this city cycling, but I think it's time for a quick lemonade at the pub. I'm still confused on how you're going to get back at me at a pub, seeing as I'm an absolute pro at stopping at a pub. Don't you worry, you'll soon see. We'll just leave our bikes outside, shall we? What, here? Yeah, here, outside. Ah, Chris, I don't know if I can leave my bike out here. It's a little bit too expensive. What if someone nicks it? I guess I'll just wait on here. Well, it looks like Hank isn't joining me for a drink inside the pub. And I guess that really is the issue with an expensive race bike like James's. You just don't feel comfortable locking it up outside a cafe or a shop or a pub. Whereas when you have a fixie like the one John built for me, it's pretty much worry-free. I mean, I could go almost anywhere, chain it up outside, and I wouldn't feel too nervous about coming back to it. And the lock wouldn't scratch my expensive paintwork either. I mean, my bike has seen 30 years of use and I just don't need to worry about it. That's winning for me. So from our very scientific test, we have worked out that the road bike is faster, easier to corner, and having gears is ideal for hilly commutes. But the Fixie is a lot cheaper, it's low maintenance, and much easier to go from bike to desk. And it's a lot less stressful to leave it outside a pub if, like me, you're riding a superbike. But what I want to know is what would you ride in a city? Would you go for a Fixie or would you go for a bike like Mile Bear over there? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you really enjoyed seeing us race against each other on those two bikes, then make sure you big give it a big up. thumbs up. And for another commuter style video, why don't you check out that one down there? Ollie and I went head to head cheap bike versus super bike.